Hey there loves! Welcome back to my channel! This is Jean Castillo and I release videos in which I share my know-hows on the nitty-gritty of English and research. If you want to reinforce your learnings in these topics, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so you wouldn't miss any of my uploads. In this video, I am gonna discuss the differences of qualitative research and quantitative research. So without much ado, let's get the ball rolling! In my previous discussion about quantitative research, I mentioned an analogy of the difference between quantitative and qualitative research, which was shared by our teacher or professor in research methods, who is Sir Tito Kabili. He said that qualitative research is like going to the market in which you do not have a list of the goods or the items that you want to buy. You just know that you are going to cook a dish, let's say chicken adobo. And as you walk in the aisle of the market, you just pick the ingredients that you need without the list. In the contrary, Quantitative research is going to the market and having a list of the goods or the ingredients that you need to buy. And whatever are on the list, you need to purchase them for you to cook your dish which is chicken adobo. And now, if you cannot still understand or decipher or delineate what I was saying or what the, my professor shared as regards that analogy, let us have a thorough discussion of the differences of quantitative and qualitative research. First, we will delve into the general framework. Quantitative research seeks to confirm hypotheses about phenomena. On the other hand, qualitative research seeks to explore phenomena. As you can observe in a qualitative research paper, there is no hypothesis made by the researchers. However, in quantitative, there is a part in which you need to write the hypothesis of the study, specifically the null hypothesis. Next, in quantitative research, instruments used are more rigid style of eliciting and categorizing responses to questions. Therefore, there is a subpart in the methodology of quantitative research which is termed as scoring and interpretation of data. The scoring and interpretation of data depicts the scale that the researchers followed in the survey questionnaire, like the Likert five-point scale of agreement, which is five, strongly agree, four, agree, three, undecided, two, disagree, and one, strongly disagree. However, in qualitative research, instruments used are more flexible, iterative style of eliciting and categorizing responses to questions. I want to emphasize these two words, flexible and iterative. Flexible is a characteristic of qualitative research. This means that some parts or some aspects in the qualitative research may change depending on the progress of the data collection. The second one is iterative. Iterative means paulit-ulit, repeated or repetitive. Therefore, in the responses of the participants, we are looking into the recurring theme or the recurring response in which it serves as a ground or a basis when the qualitative researchers would stop the data collection. There is the so-called theoretical saturation in qualitative research. Theoretical saturation entails that there is a paulit-ulit or a repeated manifestation in the responses of the participants. Once you have reached these repetitive answers from the participants, you have now arrived at theoretical saturations and you can stop with your data collection. 
The next difference is that quantitative research use highly structured methods such as questionnaires, surveys, and structured observations. So, I have mentioned this a while ago already that quantitative research utilizes survey questionnaires. These survey questionnaires are standardized instruments or validated instruments. Standardized instruments are those which are already used in tests, in research, that you no longer need to validate them. However, if the survey questionnaire is self-made, you have to tap internal and external validators for help. They will evaluate, they will verify the statements that you have included in the survey questionnaire. Whatever recommendations or comments that they have suggested should be followed by the researchers. Meanwhile, qualitative research use semi-structured methods such as in-depth interview, focus group, and participant observations. Semi-structured methods are used in qualitative research because again, it is flexible and the researchers must provide guide questions for the interview or FGD. Both quantitative and qualitative researchers need or require observations. However, in quantitative, the observation must be structured. That means whatever is listed, let's say only the characteristics, the traits, or the events during the time frame set by the researchers before the conduct of the observation must be listed or considered in the data collection. However, in qualitative research, we do not have a list of the traits, the events, or the time that we want to observe during the data collection. So, whatever events or characteristics that transpire or that would be reflected in the observation time or in the observation schedule will be considered in the data collection or in the interpretation of the experiences of the participants. Next aspect is analytical objectives. Quantitative research quantifies or measures variation, whereas in qualitative research, it describes variation. Next, we have predict causal relationships in quantitative research. Quantitative research studies the cause and effect, let's say, in an experimental research and the relationships or the correlation of variables in descriptive correlational research. In qualitative research, the relationships are being described and explained. The next one is quantitative research describes characteristics of a population. Let's say your chosen population is the senior high school students in Ali National High School. However, if we have 1,000 students in Ali National High School, it does not mean that all the 1,000 senior high school students will partake in your study because you need to utilize the Slovens formula to identify the sample size. In qualitative research, individual experiences and group norms are described, which is safe to say that the qualitative research participants are lesser compared to the participants in quantitative research. Let's move on to the next aspect, which is the question format. The quantitative research requires closed-ended statements or even questions. On the other hand, qualitative research needs open-ended questions, more like the divergent questions that encourage in-depth sharing or disclosure among the participants based on the phenomenon being studied. 
Here, the researchers are not allowed to ask why questions, rather, they must formulate the what and how questions. For example, instead of saying, why do young people attempt suicide? You can rephrase the question into, what are the reasons some young people commit or attempt suicide? Pressing ahead, we have the data format. First on the list is numerical for quantitative and textual from qualitative, which I know is the most popular difference between the two. When I asked my students last school year, when we were still having our face-to-face -face classes, the first response that they shared is that numbers are utilized in analyzing quantitative data and words are used in qualitative research, which is very true. The data from quantitative research is obtained by assigning numerical values to responses. While in qualitative research, the words or texts or sharings of the participants are obtained from audio tapes, videotapes, and field notes. Moving forward, we have flexibility in study design. Quantitative research has a stable design from beginning to end. So if you decided to conduct an experimental research, the moment you started with your research and the moment when you finished your experiment, you have to stick with that design. However, in qualitative research, there are some aspects which are flexible. So, if in quantitative research, you have to stick with correlational research or causal relationship, then you have to do that. But it is a different story in qualitative research. The data collection methods, age brackets of participants, time frame, among others, can be subjected to change depending on the progress of the research work. The next one is participants' responses do not influence or determine how and which questions researchers ask next. That is for quantitative because of course, the research instrument or the survey questionnaire used in a quantitative research is already finished and validated. Therefore, you have to stick with the order. However, in qualitative research, since the participants' responses affect how and which questions researchers ask next, we need to come up with guide questions. Like what I said a while ago, these guide questions may or may not be followed during the conduct of the interview or focus group because the follow-up questions or the succeeding questions will be identified by the responses of your participants. Next on the list is study design is subject to statistical assumptions and conditions. Therefore, we have the statistical data analysis in quantitative research. There are a lot like the descriptive statistics, frequency, percentage, mean, and there are the more complicated ones like t-test, person r, multiple regression, chi-square, among others. In qualitative research, meanwhile, data collection and research questions are adjusted according to what is learned from the field. And these noteworthy statements, which are iterative from the interview or from the participants' accounts, are analyzed using, let's say, thematic analysis. Thematic analysis require the noteworthy statements, basic themes, organizing themes, and 
global themes. And lastly, in quantitative research, human participants are treated almost like inanimate objects. While in qualitative research, the researchers understand that they are dealing with human beings with feelings, emotions, life, experiences, and minds to interpret their personal experiences within their context. That's why it is very important that researchers build rapport with their interviewees, with their participants in a qualitative research. Because the veracity of their statements can be reflected in their nonverbal cues. So it is very important that the researchers do not only have a transcription of the statements of the participants, but they must also take note the nonverbal cues shown during the interview or FGD. Then, after the interview, the researchers must not stop establishing a connection or communication with the participants because they still need to conduct a series of observation, a series of interview with the participants' family members or peers as well in order to come up with triangulation. And that's it for the differences of quantitative and qualitative research. Before I end this discussion, I want to encourage all my viewers, whether they are my students or not, to make a Venn diagram which reflects the contrast and comparison between qualitative research and quantitative research. When we say contrast, you have to show the differences and when we talk about comparison, show the similarities of qualitative and quantitative research. That concludes today's lesson. I hope you learned a thing or two from me. If I was able to help you understand the differences of qualitative and quantitative studies, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell to keep you posted of my lessons. Thank you so much for watching and again, thank you for bearing with me despite my noisy neighborhood. It also annoys me to be honest. Bye!